comes to high-rise commercial construction or residential construction dealing with concrete floors, there's some interesting things going on. These sorts of projects um, are built to quite a high technical standard. Um, there are a lot more things that are considered. And even if you're not a high-rise building builder, you might find this interesting. Um, this is a product <coughs> that solves a problem. Uh, code authorities are very concerned with pipe penetrations through concrete floors. Um, so that might be a water pipe or electrical conduits or pipes of any sort that go through a concrete floor between levels pose a number of dangers. And inspectors are very careful to see that certain conditions are met uh, in those pipe penetrations. And it's usually um, a seat of the pants kind of thing. You know, cutting some pipe of whatever sort, putting it in place before that concrete floor is poured, and then when the pipes are actually put through that penetration, there has to be protection for water uh, leaking from one floor to another and also f f to prevent smoke and flames from lower floors to uh, extending up to higher floors. So, as I said, it's kind of a seat of the pants thing. It can take a long time to do this sort of installation, and that's where this caught my eye. Um, this is a product that handles all of those requirements in one go. And, and it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of thought behind this, and, and I'll explain some of the thought to you now. Um, the Hydro Flame, that's the name of it. And first of all, it's, it's telescoping. You can see this particular one telescopes from 8 inches to 12 inches. So you can, um, you can unlock it. The tradespeople involved in installing it can unlock it. Change the length for whatever floor thickness is being poured, and then, and then lock it back again before they install it. Now this is the bottom of the hydro flame, and it's going to, to sit on whatever metal or wood decking that there is in place before concrete is poured. So you can imagine this is the decking that's going to hold the concrete and we're going to have a floor that's this thick. Uh, this fastens in place either directly to the metal deck or with uh, different brackets like this if you're putting it on a wood deck. And the concrete can can now be poured against it. Now here's real world problem number one. <clears throat> if you've ever poured concrete in a commercial situation, you know that it's not exactly an exacting science. It's very easy to pour a little bit too much. So it's conceivable that this sort of a sleeve might get covered in concrete a little bit. It's not a big deal from a structural point of view, except the people who come back later, they can't see where the hole is supposed to be, even if it's covered by a quarter of an inch of concrete. So this system has these little whisker things that you can you can activate. So you put this in place, you put the disposable lid on top, and let's say the concrete crew does pour a little bit too thick. Well, you still have whiskers up above. You know where to go around and, and bash out the, the, the slight excess of concrete, and then open this up, concrete's all around, and the rest of the installation is ready to go. Now, another thing that the hydro flame sleeve does is it protects lower floors from water that might be used to put out fires in higher floors. You got a fire on the 10th floor and you don't have uh, sufficient protection against that firefighting water going down through pipe penetrations. You can ruin all the floors underneath because the water just flows out. But if you look inside here, you can see that there's a, a rubber membrane. And that's part of the design. So let's say this is in place in a floor and I'm installing a pipe that goes through. Well, that rubber, that rubber gasket here, let's, that seals around the pipe. so that lower floors are protected. 
all in one go. So when water is poured in, it's not going anywhere. You know, the water's inside, but it's sealed. And that's a big bonus for um, meeting code requirements in different localities and also for just plain common sense protection too. Another area where code authorities are even more concerned than with water penetration is the travel of smoke and flames from a fire uh, on a lower level to upper levels. And you can imagine that uh, a pipe penetration would pose that sort of danger. I mean, the 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 flames and the heat would be sufficient that any sort of a plastic pipe, which is standard in building nowadays, would, would burn and melt and you'd have a hole that would allow smoke and flames to travel up to higher levels and endangering people. So there's a whole science around preventing this sort of danger in high-rise structures. A uh, high-rise structure is kind of like a chimney. Uh, when it catches fire, it can create a kind of a draft effect where uh, dangerous smoke and flames are drawn up and so uh, there are requirements to prevent that chimney effect from happening and uh, it has to do with something that you can see going on here here's the pipe and if you look around this this black ring here you'll see a, a material a substance around the side that's an intumescent banding. Now, intumescent refers to the ability of something to swell in the presence of heat and flames. So the idea is that that banding, when it's sufficiently heated, uh, will, will not only not burn, but it will expand, and if necessary, if this pipe burns away here, will seal the whole opening preventing damage and even fatalities in higher levels. So normally, intumescent materials need to be added to an ordinary pipe penetration, which is not as sophisticated as this. It comes in caulking tubes and materials that can be stuffed in. But the intumescent material is included in this. And I want to show you a little bit about what that stuff looks like when it actually gets hot. The torch I'm using to heat this intumescent ring does not deliver the same amount of overall heat as an actual fire does, but it does give you a sense of what this material does when it gets hot. It, it doesn't actually burn, uh, and it does expand, as you can see here. If I had kept heating, the intumescent material would have sealed this off completely. So the system has some other features too, like uh, extensions that can be threaded in and um, you know, other details. The interesting thing is, and this speaks to a larger issue that, that's happening in the construction industry in general, is this unit here costs about half as much as um, you know, a, a seat of the pants done on site sort of approach when you consider the labor involved. So, it's cheaper, faster, and better. And you see that sort of thing across the board in all uh, areas of construction as difficult details get to be modularized with specialized items, then what you end up with is lower cost and, and better performance as the construction business modularizes, I guess you could say. And this is one of the latest examples, I could give you dozens of other examples of things like that that are happening in the world of construction of all kinds. Thanks for watching. Click here to join the thousands of people who get the Bailey Line Road hands-on how-to newsletter for free every Saturday morning.